Hello, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am DG Badimasi. Nigeria is still coming to terms with the death of the first ever Nigerian to die of the Ebola virus. The Nigerian nurse who treated the late Liberian Patrick Sawyer, who died of the virus about five days after he arrived in Nigeria. Health officials have confirmed five other persons have been diagnosed with the virus and are being treated at an isolated ward at the mainland hospital in Lagos. We spoke to the virologist who is part of the team monitoring those who may have contracted the virus for the latest on the situation. And this is what he told us. But, um, we are moving closer to the first stage of uh, incubation period. That's exposure with the uh, index case. So once we are through with that, so we now know that we are now moving into the secondary contacts. Secondary contacts, people having contacts with those contacts that are having uh, signs and symptoms now. So we have their own incubation period to be monitored. So as we are moving gradually, at least we know we are getting upper hand. So we, based on what we have now, we know those that have exposures and we are monitoring their contacts too. Those are the secondary contacts. So we are counting the incubation period from that time too, not with the index, but the index, I mean the incubation period on the secondary level. And you also have to pray that the secondary level too Don't, will not meet Exactly, contacts. exactly. So you can now do the calculation. So, but like I did say earlier on is we need to detect very early. So once we detect that very early, that will now limit the chances of transmission to many people. So we, once we are able to get them, then we'll uh, put them at the isolation uh, uh, ward. And uh, then we monitor them. And uh, the treatment is there, the, the syndromic treatment is there. And which, uh, the, once uh, we apply that, at least uh, the chances of recovery is very high. Now, with the death of that Nigerian nurse from the Ebola virus, the government is appealing for medical volunteers to help treat patients who have been confirmed to have the virus. The Lagos state government has even offered to give special incentives, including life insurance, to any medical worker who volunteers to help. Doctors in public health facilities are on strike across the country and officials uh, and officials say that is seriously affecting their capacity to provide adequate care and treatment to those who have been quarantined of the virus. Earlier today, I had a chat with one of the doctors on strike and began by asking him if the strike has been suspended and uh, if there was, uh, as there was a rumor, I should say, earlier in the day that the doctors have suspended the strike. The strike has not been suspended because... Um the government has not demonstrated enough sincerity and they have not met our demands. Now we as doctors, we are not fighting Nigerians. We want to protect Nigerians. A lot of our members have volunteered to actually take care of people. But even if they are going to come back to work, there are certain measures must be put in place. What do you have for doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers? Are they insured? We want, we want people to take care of Ebola without insurance. People should just go and die. But the there Lagos State government has said it is willing to give life insurance <coughs> to doctors who, who volunteer to, to help in, 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 in treating patients with Ebola. Yes, we are not talking of doctors who volunteer alone. We are talking of doctors who are working, nurses who are working in an hospital. So if they bring a patient with Ebola, suspected or confirmed case of Ebola, everybody is at risk. So you don't know it's going to, who, can, who can contact the Ebola virus at any point in time. Look at the scenario in Liberia. As of today, there are about 60 doctors in Liberia are dead. I, don't, I can't confirm the number of nurses. Most of the hospitals are shut down, schools, all those things are shut down. So is that just the case? As, as a doctor, do, do you think doctors are really scared of Ebola? They are scared that because they, they are scared that they might not be willing to, to volunteer for uh, this, this treatment? Well, what you should realize is that doctors are human beings first. You are a human being first before you are a doctor. So there's people fear. Everybody will, should be, will be concerned. But all we just need is for government to demonstrate enough sincerity and provide necessary things that can protect the life of doctors and other healthcare workers that will be coming in contact or taking care of these Ebola cases. If we are sure that there are provision on grants to protect the life and 
ensure the life of doctors and other workers, then I'm sure that a lot of us will be more than willing to sacrifice to take care of this patient. But as I'm talking to you now, well, there are doctors that are already on the field, you see, that have already, in fact, the, the official from Lagos State were here yesterday with WHO. Some of our members have already volunteered to be part of the people that take care of Ebola, Ebola uh, patients. And there are, I think a centre has already been designated where the patients will be treated. Because it is very dangerous for you to say that every hospital should be treating Ebola. That is a recipe for disaster. So you have to have a dedicated centre where Ebola patients can be treated in order to prevent the spread. Now, Delta State may not be affected by the Ebola virus, but the governor there, Emmanuel Udonga, has decided to take the necessary precaution just in case the virus lands at the doorstep of the state. Not surprisingly, you want to say, because the governor is, of course, a medical doctor. He has earmarked seven hospitals in the state as isolation centers to handle any suspected case of the Ebola virus disease. Speaking at a meeting of the People's Democratic Party stakeholders in Delta North and South Central zones in Asaba. The governor said that the centers were put in place by the government to forestall the outbreak of the virus in the state, adding that a committee has also been set up to educate and enlighten people of the state on the prevention and management of the Ebola virus. Dwanga says his government was doing everything possible to deal with the scourge, adding that an inter interministerial committee comprising the commissioners for health, environment and information had been set up to sensitize and brief the citizens on the measures in place to tackle any outbreak uh, uh, in the state. He said every local government area in the state now has a contact person and there's a contact phone number, which is, of course, 32815, where messages, that's SMS messages now, can be sent to uh, report any suspected case in the state, calling for the cooperation of the people in the state to forestall any outbreak. And to security issues now, Minister of Defense uh, Ali Guzo has called for collective effort in the fight against terrorism and insurgency in the country. Guzo made the call at the graduation dinner award night for course 22 participants of the National Defense College in Abuja. Guzo said it is not just government and security services that are in the war, but that the country is under siege. He said the war against terrorism in the country can only be won if we keep a united front. He also said that military power was essential to ensure stability, without which it would be impossible to build and sustain peace. But added that the current challenges in some parts of the country is a clear reminder that military might alone is not enough to ensure peace. The Africa Development Bank Group Thursday declared that the drop in oil revenue owing to oil theft, pipeline vandalism, as well as security challenges mounting in the northeast of the country might impede uh, optimistic economic outcomes for Nigeria in the coming years. The bank made the declaration in its African Economic Outlook 2014 report, which was launched in Abuja. The report, which focused on 54 African countries, detailed the current state of economic and social development, as well as prospect for these countries. Aside from declining oil revenue in Nigeria, the report also highlighted the lethargic recovery of the global economy, continued tension for resource control in the Niger Delta region, and possible destruction as a result of the 2015 general elections, as uh, other factors that may affect the performance of the economy. According to the report, while prospects in the country were being driven by performance in the activities in the non-oil sector, such as agriculture, information and communication technology, trade and services, the recent decline in oil production has become a serious cause for concern. Now, we all thought uh, we were done with the impeachment of the former governor of Adama State, Murtala Nyako, but I guess we were wrong because... The former deputy governor of Adama State, Balangilari, who resigned before the impeachment process was concluded, has now approached a federal high court in Abuja to swear him in as governor of the state. Now, you may consider that absurd 
but wait until you hear his argument. Ngilari told the court that he did not formally resign from office as deputy governor as stipulated by the constitution and therefore wants the court to order the chief judge of Adama State to swear him in as governor. He wants the court to determine, among others, whether by the provisions of sections 306, subsection 1, 2, and 5 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic, he, as deputy governor of Adama State, resigned his office by addressing a letter of resignation dated the 15th of July 2014 to the first defendant. And that first defendant, of course, is a speaker of the Adama State House of Assembly. Defendants now in the suit include the ex-governor, Murtala Nyako, acting state governor, Omaru Fintiri, speaker of Adama State House of Assembly, the State House of Assembly itself, and the Independent National Electoral Commission. Of course, we will surely keep a tab on this one and see how things unfold in court. Now, after a long-drawn battle between the Lagos State Government and students of the State University over a fee hike in the institution, the students have at last won both the battle and the war, as the government has now capitulated to their demands. State Governor Babatunde Fashola has ordered a reversal of the tuition fees in the Lagos State University to 25,000 naira, which the students initially paid before it was hiked. Fashola made the announcement at the convocation ceremony of the institution held in Ojo, Lagos State. The hike in the school fees of Lasso had degenerated into a crisis, forcing uh, students of the institution to embark on series of protests demanding that the fees be reduced. Civil rights groups and activists alike had also bemoaned the state government over the tuition fees hike. In June, the Lagos State Government announced a reduction in the tuition fees by 34% to 60% across the different faculties and courses, but that did not go down well with the students. The government has now decided to yield to the students' demand. President Goodluck Jonathan has asked for increased support from the United States following his efforts at that to foster productivity within other sectors of the Nigerian economy. In a statement by presidential spokesperson Ruben Abati, Jonathan made the call Wednesday evening in Washington, D.C. while speaking at a dinner held in his honor by the United States Chambers of Commerce and the Corporate Council on Africa. The president expressed the light that the volume of trade between Nigeria and the United States had increased to over $36 billion per annum. He said the volume was bound to rise further with greater cooperation between the two countries. Jonathan stated that his administration welcomed the support of the Obama administration as well as the United States Chamber of Commerce and the Corporate Council on Africa for its continued efforts towards positioning Nigeria's economy to become one of the 20 largest economies in the world by 2020. Russia has granted U.S. fugitive Edward Snowden permission to stay three more years in the country, his attorney said in a televised press conference in Moscow Thursday. Snowden, who leaked secret information about U.S. spying programs, was granted an extension after his year-long leave to stay in Russia expired July 31st. He recently formally requested that Russia's government extend his temporary asylum and his attorney, Anatoly Kucherina, said the request has uh, been accepted. The whistleblower fled the U.S. in 2013 after leaking details of the National Security Agency's surveillance and telephone tapping operations. The U.S. has charged him with theft of government property and communicating classified information. Snowden, he is a former National Security Agency contractor, has been hailed by privacy activists for revealing the extent of the NSA's surveillance operations and details of alleged U.S. spying on foreign leaders, including U.S. allies. The U.S. Congress has since attempted to impose restrictions on the NSA's electronic surveillance activities. Chief Prosecutor Jerry Nell has called South African Blade Runner Oscar Pistorius an appalling witness who repeatedly lied in his testimony in a crude attempt to defend himself against a murder charge for killing girlfriend Rivers Steenkamp. Pistorius has been accused of murdering his law graduate and model girlfriend Steenkamp at his home in Pretoria on Valentine's Day last year. If found guilty of premeditated murder, he could face life in prison, a potential lesser charge of culpable homicide
who carry a sentence of 15 years. Nell also harshly criticized the legal team of the double amputee athlete, saying it floated, or yeah, that it floated more than one theory about what happened on the night that Pistorius shot Stinkham through a closed toilet door in his home. Nell said defense lawyers had argued uh, that Pistorius acted in self-defense, fearing an intruder was in the house, but also raised the possibility that he was not criminally responsible, accidentally shooting Stinkham because he was startled. The court will have to reject this evidence. The court must have a credible version for the accused, Nell to told the Pretoria court during his closing argument. There were no juries at trials in South Africa, so the athlete's fate will ultimately be decided by the judge, assisted by two assessors. Falconers head coach Peter Dedevo has promised that his team will perform better in their next group game against Korea Republic. The Falconets played out a 1-1 stalemate in their opening game, a group game against Mexico, a result that leaves them fairly balanced in the group following England 1-1 draw with Korea Republic in the group's first game. Speaking during his post-match conference, Dedebo lamented his side's inability to defeat the Mexicans and admitted the encounter was tough for his ladies but expressed optimism that future matches would be better. Looking ahead to the next match, I want to work on every position on the field. Goalkeeping, defense, midfield. But the most important thing we need to improve on is our finishing, the coach said. Well, we want to wish them the best of luck in the next match. I'm talking about our Falconers now. Let's just hope they're able to beat Korea Republic. It's on that note, we end the news now. We thank you very much for watching. I am Deji Badimasi. We're back again tomorrow.